Okay. I discovered I can zoom on this stream. So I can zoom in so you guys might actually be able to see what I'm doing for once. It's crazy. It only took seven episodes to, for me to figure that out. I know. It's awesome. Where he gets some happy little plasma. Wow. He's got a... He's got a shield. He might block that plasma. You never know. But anyway, today I am going to do... Uh, I'm going to paint a wraith guard. And I'm going to use some techniques that the good old Mr. Bob Ross has taught us uh, for blending. To show that you can blend quite easily without an airbrush or wet blending or any fancy technique other than dip your paint in the paint pot and go to town. So we're going to start with some Mephiston Red, if it'll focus. Hey, Mephiston Red. I'm going to start with that. And because we're going to be blending, uh, I'm going to start with the head. That's the easiest spot to blend. Uh, because we're going to be blending, we want a very smooth surface to blend on. Um, a any surface with any imperfections is going to show up when we start our blending. It'll catch on any ridges or anything like that. So we're going to take our brush, which in this case is a nice makeup brush. Uh, I got this at Walmart. I think it was like maybe nine of them for five dollars or something. It's a medium sized one. And I'm just going to dip it straight in the pot. And then, just like you would normally dry brushing, I got some got my paint on it there. Just like you'd normally dry brush, I'm gonna get as much of the paint off the bristles as I can, while also evenly coating all the bristles. You can see there. So I'm just gonna get most of the paint off of it, and then I'm just gonna come in and I'm going to put this paint all over the head, and I'll probably do some of the other while we're at it. And just like Bob Ross taught us, we're going to move our brush in little tiny circles. This helps to get a nice, smooth, even coat all over everything. I'm just going to go in. And as you can see, it's a super smooth um, coat so that we can blend right on top of this without any trouble at all. Just gonna do this all over the figure. Doing this all over his armor. Gonna get his shield as well. You may need some to add some more paint to your brush when you do this, which I will. And then go back in and keep doing little circles. Just little circles over and over and over. I can't remember what Bob Ross uses the little circles for. I know he uses them for something. It might be clouds. But uh, but I know he does little circles. And he blends with little circles. I think it's with clouds now that I think about it. So we're not using it, using it exactly how he uh, originally intended it. But I like to think that Bob wouldn't mind if we... Uh, repurpose some of his techniques for any kind of art project. And that's what these are at the end of the day, an art project. That shield doesn't block anything but hopes and dreams. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. So I'm just going to load some more paint on the brush. And I'm just going to keep doing little circles all over the miniature. And as you can see, as I'm coating this miniature, there are zero surface imperfections in the paint that's getting applied. It almost looks like we sprayed it on there, but we didn't. We dipped our paintbrush, in this case a makeup brush, in the pot, and then we did little Bob Ross circles all over the figure. Get some more light up in here. There we go. Gonna get a little bit more paint and keep doing circles. This can be a little more tedious than other methods of applying paint, but if you want a nice smooth blend, this is really the only way that it's ever gonna work. 
with a paintbrush straight out of a pot, I should say. There are many other ways to blend. But if you can't do a technique by just sticking your brush in some paint and going for it, then why even bother? It's just too much effort, too much time. So I'm just going to make sure all of this is covered. And then we're going to move on to our first color that we're going to blend into this color. Um, the other way that you could start this off is you could just spray this miniature, your base coat. Uh, I just decided I would brush this on this time just so you guys could get a clear indication of how easy it is to brush on a smooth coat like this. So, you know, I mean, some people might live in an apartment building and they're not able to get outside as easily to prime things with a rattle can or who knows what their situation might be. Um, but if you're painting miniatures, you for sure have a brush and you for sure have paint. And that's all you need for this technique. Um, if you're wondering specifically, this brand of makeup brush is called Eco Tools. Um, I'll put a link to them in the description once this makes it to YouTube. But uh, but otherwise, if you're watching this live, you'll just have to do your own Googling. All right. So once we have that red applied, nice and smooth, we're not going to rinse our brush. I'm going to leave it just like that. It's so dry on the on the bristles now that it barely even comes off on my hand. So it's not going to mess up the next step, which is to get some orange. In this case, I'm using, what am I using? Troll Slayer Orange. I'm just going to do the same thing I did before. Grab some out of the pot. Make sure the bristles are completely coated. With this color not overloaded but just coated get a little bit more I think get uh, most of it off and then we're just gonna go back and keep doing those little circles so we're just going straight over this red but we're doing we're going not over the entire surface of the miniature this time maybe 60% of the surfaces. So we're just gonna go over the head there. We'll do some down here on the legs, on the arms, on the shoulder pads. Just doing little circles anywhere you wanna have that blend. And on the, on the rest of the miniature, it's not super important where you place your blends because the head is going to give you all the visual interest you need, really. It's just nice to have all the colors on the miniature, but make sure that the head of the miniature is where the really good blend is. So now I am going to rinse my brush after this step. Just rinse it like you would rinse any other brush. Just make sure all the paint is off it. And then we're going to go into the next one, next color, which is Averland Sunset. Just make sure your, your makeup brush is nice and dry. You don't want to be doing this technique with a soaking wet brush. It will leave you with lots of streaks all over your miniature, and nobody wants that. Or at least... I don't want that. Maybe you want that. If you want streaks, then yeah. Make sure your brush is soaking wet when you start doing this. So I'm just drying this brush off by rubbing it on my the palm of my hand, making sure all the water is out of it. All right. And we're just going to take the Avalon Sunset, and we're going to do the same thing we did with the other two colors. Get some on the brush. Wipe it off on the palette. Make sure all the bristles are getting loaded evenly. And 
then come in and do the same thing right on the head. Nice little circles. Circles, circles, circles. Just like that. And then I'm going to do some more down here. Just do some, just some larger circles just to grab the other pieces of the miniature, leaving some of the red showing, some of the orange showing, but getting some of this in it. And there, we're all set with that. And then we're going to do move on to our last color, which is Dorn Yellow. We're going to do the exact same thing again. Yeah, just focus on the head. You got it. That's it. That's all you got to do. do. The exact same thing we've done with every other color. Make sure you get some paint on your brush. Wipe a lot of it off to load up all the bristles. Going to need a lot of paper towels handy when you do this technique, but that's okay. You can also use a, a legitimate towel and just wash it in some bleach when you're done. Save the turtles, that sort of thing. So once you have that wiped off, then we just go and do the exact same thing again, making even smaller circles than last time. Might even be too much paint still. Just go in little circles in a couple places. Make sure to get the, the smoothness down there. Alrighty. Now that we've done that, we can go about painting the rest of the miniature in the same old way that we usually do. Uh, but this technique works on bigger surfaces. Um, you can do it across whole miniatures. But it works on bigger surfaces. Let me find another example of it here. At least I thought I had another example of it. Oh yeah, here it is. Here's a wing of a Dark Eldar Scourge. Now you can see I did a, a much more vibrant white, uh, yellow than, the, than on this guy. But that's another example of somewhere where it works quite well. Um, this works on tanks uh, or any kind of vehicle. Um, and the best thing about it is normally when you dry brush, your brushes can end up like this, frayed and terrible looking. With this kind of brush, because this is what it's meant for, uh, and the, the bristles are in sort of a round shape, they'll always want to come back to this shape. So you can use this brush for years probably, and it will never, uh, will never look any worse than it already is. All right, so then we're going to move on to the gems, I think. And for the gems, I'm going to use some black Templar. Oh, I'm going to throw it. Some black Templar contrast paint. This will give us a nice coating over the red that we've already done, but also not run, or not rather not go on chunky so that our gems actually look like gems. Going to do this on every gem, put it on pretty thick so that the red is covered. It's got asymmetrical gems there, that's kind of interesting. I haven't painted too many Eldar in my days, so. Making sure we get all the gems in this color. We want to make sure this color doesn't uh, run down and start streaking onto our red. If it does, um, it's not the end of the world. The, the red should be pretty well set on there at this point, especially with all the dry brushing you did on top of it. Uh, so if you do get a streak running down 
your other paint, you can flood the area with water, basically. Um, get yourself a brush and just dunk tons of water onto that area and then soak it back up and you should be able to get all the offending color back off. So then we have to start, after I do these gems, I have to start to think about how we're going to get contrast onto this miniature. He's mostly, and I mean uh, figurative, or figurative? Color contrast as opposed to actual contrast paint. Um, woo, like right there. My brush slipped and I got some white on there, or some black on the red rather, so I'm going to flood the area with a wet brush and see if we can get it off. We might not be able to. I might be doomed. But, nope, I'm not doomed. There you go. Look at that. It's like I planned it. <laughs> Explained what you had to do, and then it happened, and I did it, and it worked. I'm just going to retouch up this. Woo! Did that too soon. <laughs> it's just a disaster. Went to fix a mistake and caused another one. Just going to, again, flood this area with some water. And this time, before I apply more paint to it, I'm going to make sure I get all the excess water off of the area with a dry brush. Good. One more for good luck. Use this makeup brush, in fact. It'll soak up all sorts of water. All right. Now that we fixed our mistake of a mistake, we'll go back to this. But, like I was saying, we have to figure out where to put, how to get contrast on this miniature because the whole miniature is red. And he doesn't have tons of other detail beyond his armor. So we're going to have to think of places where we can put some contrasting colors. In this case, what contrasts with red is green. So we're going to have to put it in some small places and when you want to, when you start doing that kind of thing, when you put a, just a small contrast compared to your main color, um, you want to think about putting it in multiple places and specifically three places. Uh, I don't know the science behind this. Um, it's something to do with what our eyes perceive to be pretty and correct. Um, but if you can get your contrasting color, even if it's a small piece of that color, into three places, the eye will enjoy what it's seeing, basically. So while I'm doing these gems, I'm thinking about where I could put some green in three, even if they're tiny spots, to get some contrast onto this figure. And I'm thinking that I'm going to do a knee pad in green. So that's one. A sham wow will also soak up the water and you get three for the purchase of one. You know, that's true. The problem with that is this miniature is very tiny and a sham wow is quite large. You might have to maybe cut them up to get what you're really looking for there. But anyway, um, so I'm going to put the green probably on the knee pad, probably on the shield here. And then probably on the axe. I'm going to have to be very careful of where I put it on the shield, though. Because when you're looking at the shield in this direction, from the front of the miniature, you're not going to see much of that shield. So we're going to have to be very careful about where we put it. I'm just going to get this last, these last couple gems. And then I guess we will move on to that green. That'll be the next thing we do. This guy has a lot of gems. I'm not sure what the gems mean in Eldar lore, but this guy's got a lot of them. Oh God, now we're talking about Flex Seal. This is just infomercial daily. That's what we're going to change the name of the stream to. Straight from the pot is dead. Infomercial daily is born. Just 
I'm gonna get the reverse side gems. There are so many gems. There's still gems all over this arm too. It's ridiculous. Should have picked a different figure. Did not realize I was gonna have to paint 10,000 gems. I feel like most people might just leave these gems the same color as the armor. Maybe that's where I went wrong. But whatever, I've started it now. There's no going back. I think these are the last. Oh, there's one right there. I think now. Oh, no, I gotta get the reverse side of these. Since I get the reverse side of these, I think we're done with the gems. Oh, we're not. This is the worst stream ever. It's just watch Greg paint gems and then get angry at painting gems and then find more gems to paint. This is the worst. So I missed a patch of white there. That's weird. Or yeah. Just make sure to get that whole gem there. Good. Welcome to painting Eldar. Yeah, I haven't painted a lot of Eldar. So. Alright. Close that up. And I'm noticing that I missed a little bit of the red under here. So I'm going to fix that with some contrast paint. I'm going to fix that with Blood Angel's Red. I'm just going to, because especially because it's an underneath part, if it's not quite the same shade, it's not a big deal. And by underneath, I mean it's like in his legs, underneath his other stuff here. So I'm just going to put some contrast paint on it to fix that right up. And you'll never even know. I mean, you'll know because you watched the video. But anyone who hasn't watched the video and just sees this Eldar will be like, oh, well, yeah, he's completely covered. Greg didn't make a mistake, not at all. Yeah, woo. All right. I'm sure I missed at least a gem somewhere. But we're going to move on. We're going to go to the green. So for the green, I'm going to use, because I, it's cool and it's new, I'm going to use the Technical Tesseract Glow. Just came out just the other day. So we're going to use that. But we're going to have to put another color under that first. If we try to put that directly over the green... No go. It's going to be terrible. So I think we are going to put some. I think we're going to put. I'm not sure what color. I think I'll put some white underneath it. No, I changed my mind. I'm going to put silver underneath it. So I'm going to use some Iron Breaker. And I'm just going to put some Iron Breaker everywhere we need to put some green. So I'm going to do this knee pad because this knee pad is away from the shield and I know I want green on my shield I'm gonna put make this knee pad silver and I'm gonna get just the front of the knee pad here I'm not gonna get this back ridge because I want it to seem like this was painted on to this not I mean obviously I'm painting it on but I want it to be like the Eldar painted this on uh, as like a some form of heraldry, uh, if the Eldar have heraldry. I don't want it to be that this part was made in green. So I'm just painting the front, leaving this back ridge here, the back, leaving that red, as if the whole thing was made in a red material or maybe completely painted in a red material and they've come back and added this green later. So then I'm gonna do the shield and we have all these runes right down, running down the middle of the shield here. And I think that is where we're going to put our green. So I'm just going to paint these runes in the silver. I'm going to leave the red hanging out on either side of it. My arm breaker's dying here. I have to get a new one soon. 
Although with GW's paint shortage, that might be a uh, might not be so easy. Alrighty, and then I still have to decide what my third area of green is going to be. I was thinking the axe, but the axe blade might be too obvious of a place to put it. It might look a little strange, especially that's probably a power axe. So it'd be kind of strange for their power weapon energy to be the same color as their heraldic paint. So I'm going to have to find a different spot to be green. And I think I'm going to do this spike here on his elbow or forearm. I'm going to coat that in some silver. And that will be our next green spot. So I'm just going to get that here and of course there's a gem on there one of thousands of gems so I'm gonna have to paint around that this, of course why make it easy this is why no one should play Eldar right here why torture yourself no you know what here you go self-aware content right here everyone should play Eldar but you see how annoying this is to paint you should instead find your local commission painter and ask them to paint it for you. That's the key. Because, you know, if you're paying them, well, it doesn't matter. It can be annoying. They're getting paid. So, yep, that's it. Everyone, go pick up an Eldar army. Realize how annoying it would be to paint. Find your local commission painter. Pay them to paint it. Excellent advice, I know. All right, so we're gonna coat this. And again, I don't know the science behind the three uh, three location thing. If there are any art majors in the chat, feel free to chime in. All I know is that it exists. A rule of three. Just like you can only bring three predators in 40K, for now until they're turned to legends, you can only put a color in three places if you want it to look good, I guess. I'll sell you mine marked up 300%. Wow. That advice is 2K points late. I've seen your Eldar stuff. You have more than 2K points. <laughs> Eldar? Harlequins count as Eldar. You can't fool me. All right. So I'm going to paint the cloth, I think. Just to prepare it for our... I'm going to let the silver dry. I'm going to use some wraith bone on the cloth. Let the silver dry a little bit, and then we'll come back with the green. I'm just going to paint the cloth wraith bone. We might leave it wraith bone, or we might come back and mess around with it. Maybe we'll get fancy and put an Eldar rune on it if we're really feeling feisty. Wouldn't that be something? You guys get blending and a freehand in one video? I don't know. I must not have had enough caffeine or something today to try to attempt that. I also do think it's funny that the test thing I did before the stream, like in 30 seconds, came out better than the blends I did on stream. But, you know, it is what it is. Can we have a conversation about why the color purple doesn't exist? Sure. Go ahead, discuss why purple doesn't exist. He's listening, though. So keep in mind what you say. He'll get you. But yeah, we can talk about why purple doesn't exist. Go for it. What's your first what's your first point in this debate? Cause so I've got a feisty space marine. That's blue. Um kinda looks like purple, not gonna lie. Kinda looks like purple. And I don't think you want to be questioning a Space Marine. And I know for a fact that that Space Marine says it's purple. While I'm doing this uh, cloth, I'm also going to do the handle of his axe in this Wraith Bone color. So that I can... Use some contrast paint on it later. 
actually gonna I don't know what this thing is in the middle of his chest it's not a gem though it's got some fancy symbol on it so I'm gonna do that in rice but also this is gonna be the dress thing all over again yeah except the dress thing I accepted that people could see things differently this the space marines are on the side of purple existing so that pretty much answers that question there I just realized there's gems on this freaking axe. Oh boy. I'm just going over the axe in Wraithbone so that we can come back and use some contrast on it later. Um, and we're, because we're going to be using a very light green on uh, the pieces that we painted silver, we are going to go and use a dark blue on the axe. Green and blue don't technically complement each other but I think they actually technically are dissident colors but we're not worried about it dark and light those are complementary we'll make it work that space marine is going to tie oh god I can't say that out loud <laughs> there might be kids watching almost got me though Almost got me. What's funny is that's my boss. And he almost got me to say things that I can't say. <laughs> All right. Get that weapon done. All right. Our silver's probably dry enough now. We're going to go on to this green. And like I said before... This green, get this purple space ring out of here. This green we're going to use is Tesseract Glow. It's a brand new, definitely not sponsored, contrast paint. And it is brighter than the brightest green. And we're going to put it everywhere we put silver. Wait, did I put silver in a third place? I only put it in two places. All right, here we go. We're going to do it. We're gonna, this is a great stream, I know. We're going to do this, these two first, and then we'll come back and find a third spot. So I'm going to put it on this silver. I'm going to put it pretty thick at first, and then I will pull some of it back off. Just to make sure we actually get the coverage we need. <laughs> people people going at each other in chat. I like it. All right. I'm just going to pull some of this back off so we keep the detail. Once that dries, we'll have our detail. We gotta touch up the red here in a minute. We'll do that soon. I'm gonna put this green on this knee pad here. Again, making sure to only get the front of the knee pad because we want it to look like it's painted this way by the Eldar, not made in that color. So we still have to find a third spot for this. All right, I've got it. I'm gonna touch up my red while this dries. I'm going to lay him down because we've got a decent puddle of this technical paint on here. So if I stand him up straight, it's going to run straight down the leg. So I'm going to hold him like this, see if I can open the paint I need with one hand while he sits here. <laughs> and for this, we're going to use some Blood Angel Red contrast paint just to touch up the shield real quick. Trying to keep him at an angle. So that I don't lose that bubble down the leg. Just gonna go in and touch that up. It's a little darker than our initial red, but that's okay. All right. I rinse my brush off, and now I'm just gonna come down here to this knee pad and pull the paint around a little bit just to get a more even coating. I am pulling a little bit of paint off when I do this because I didn't dip it in the paint again, so it's just a wet brush. That's okay. I think I want some of the silver shining through. So there we've got the green in two places. Um, I think I'm going to, the last place I'm going to put it is, where was I going to do it? I had a spot. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I painted this arm spike. Jeez, guys, is no one paying attention? 
should have been yelling at me. Like, Greg, you painted the forearm spike. That's okay, I forgive you guys. I'm just going to paint, get all this nice and green. Good, and I do, I want the silver showing through on the edges there. So we're good there. Got it there. Excellent. Alrighty. Then we're going to use some Flush Terra Red Contrast Paint. This is the dark red contrast paint. We're just going to go in and do all the internal parts of this Wraith Guard. So these little vents here on his chest, we're going to make them a darker red. This vent behind his head, I'm going to make that a darker red. And then I'm going to come down here on his shoulder, or his legs rather, and I'm going to do these little indents in a darker red. Do this one also. And then I'm just going to panel line everything that I think needs it in this darker red color. So these gaps in his feet down here, I'm going to do those in red. The gap under his knee, at least on this side, I'm going to do that in the darker red. I think I'll get above his knee also. Let's see where else needs it. Around this center gem. That needs it. His arm right here where his wrist starts. This next part of his, where his shield connects. We'll do that. Where his shield connector ends. Flip him over. This, uh, whatever this part is on his back, we'll do that in there. This guy has a lot of vents on him. These vents back here. A little too much paint on my brush. These vents back here. We'll do these in a darker red. And then the back of his knees for sure. And this part down here, because we did the front in the darker red. And the crease right there, and the crease on his other arm. And because we missed someone with our base coat, we'll just make that whole thing the darker red. And then we'll just get his armpit, that line there. Alrighty. I think that will do it for the darker red. Nope, not quite. Almost done. His wrist, his forearm thing, back of his elbow, and in between his fingers here. I'll do these fingers while I'm at it. All right. So now pretty much the only thing we have left to do is the axe and we got to finish up the gems. So for the gems, I'm going to do them real quick. It's going to be a pain because there's so many, but I'm just going to get some white, uh, in this case, vampiric highlight, put a little bit on the palette. 
and I'm just going to take my tiny little brush here and I'm just going to put a dot near the top of the gem on each gem. Doesn't have to be in the exact same spot on each one. Just so that it looks like there could be a light source reflecting off of it. You can obviously go in and do much more detail on these gems if you want to. Um, this is not going to read up close as anything other than a dot. But from the tabletop, it will look like they're reflecting some sort of light source. And that's all we're worried about. Is what's it going to look like on the gaming table? Is it going to get you your 10 points? Or is it going to get you laughed at? Do all these gems in the back here. So many gems. Just touching each gem. It's another example of where painting with the bubble can come in handy. Just get the little bubble of paint on the end of your brush and just touch it. And if you accidentally touch too much or too little, it doesn't matter. Just as long as there's some little dot of white on each gem. Almost done with this here, and then we'll move on to the axe. One more down here. Okay. All right. And then as you can see, from right up close, it just looks like you put a dot on each one. But from farther away, and definitely on the table, they will read as gems with a little bit of sparkle in them. So I'm going to do the head of his axe. And I'm going to use for this some Talisar Blue contrast paint. I'm just going to get the whole axe head. Get it on camera even. How about that? It's a new camera angle today, so still getting used to where I need to keep the miniature to have it on the screen. Coat the entire upper portion of the axe here. Except that little top bit there, because that's part of the handle. Make sure to get every side and facet of the of the axe here. We're going to use a darker color on the axe handle, so getting a little bit of blue where it doesn't belong on that is not a big deal. All right, that should do for that. I think I'm going to do a little bit of an Eldar rune on the, on the loincloth here. So for that, I'm going to use... Uh, I was going to use some shish purple, shyish purple, but I think I'm just going to use some black templar contrast paint. And I'm just going to make up an Eldar rune real quick. I have no idea what Eldar runes look like. Other than I think they got some lines, some triangles, and some curves. I think that might describe almost everything. But, here we go. I'm using contrast paint because it's thin, 
it'll flow nicely. So I'm just going to start with a line. A line's always a good place to start. Bam. Then I'm going to do a triangle. What I think a, an approximation of a triangle is. Like this. Good. I'm going to close the triangle. Even better. Wonderful. And then going to do a cross line here. And then a diagonal line here. There you go. There's your Eldar symbol. Eldar rune. I don't know what it means, but it's there. Then I'm just going to come back with some white and line along the rune we just did. Just on the side of the... I'll just pick a side. I'll just do the left-hand side. Well, the model's right. My left. And just do some lines along the side. Every right-hand side of the black lines. We'll do under this one. And under this one. It doesn't change it dramatically. But it cleans up the lines a little bit. I'm just going to do, just clean up this line a tiny bit. There we go. All right. And I'm going to finish the axe handle up here. For this, I think I'm going to use, not that, snake bite leather. Snake bite leather is a contrast paint. Here it is. It's one of the best contrast paints, in my opinion. It gives a nice... Would you believe it? Leathery color. Uh, we don't need it to be leather in this case. We don't. I don't think the Eldar use leather, but this color will work well with the red and is moving towards yellow, so it will contrast well with the blue. So we're just going to go ahead and use it. You just insulted Eldraine's mother with that rune. Wow. Well, it happens, man. I'm sure his mother's tough. She can take it. Something, something hamster. Yeah, sure. That sounds right. So I don't think they're... I don't think the Eldar are French. I could be wrong. <laughs> that would make for an amazing set of lore. The Eldar are actually French. But, uh... I don't think so. I don't think that's correct. Just gonna get the last bits here. All right, that'll work. Keep him on camera here. All right. So what do we have left? I think we're just gonna now go back and do some very quick edge highlights on the red. I was gonna use this color. Change my mind. I'm going to use Troll Slayer Orange for this. And I'm not edge highlighting everywhere, just in a couple places. So I'm going to get the edge of the shield here. Just like that. The edge of the shield over here. I'm going to get this thing behind his head, whatever it happens to be. I'm going to get the top of his head. This is a very defined angle here. All right. Just looking for a couple more places to put it. I'm going to put it on this thing, these little pads between his legs. There's some French going on in the chat. Seems weird. Let's put it there. Then I think I'm just going to put it on his shoulder pad here. And his other shoulder pad. 
Oh, too much. Too much of an edge highlight. If you do too much edge highlight, you do the same thing that I did earlier with the black. Just get your wet brush, flood the area, and just knock it right back off. Problem solved. All right, I think we're coming to the end here pretty soon. Um, think it's just about it, to be honest. I'm gonna do one different thing here, though. Thought I was gonna like that color on the handle. Turned out to not like it. But since we started with a light enough color, we can go back and put a darker color over it. I'm just gonna take some black, con black Templar contrast paint and cover up this snake bite color. Doesn't work as well as I thought it would here. I think the last thing I'll do is get the makeup brushes back out and just blend out to the edge of this axe here. And then we'll call it a day. While I'm doing this, I'll just say that Wednesday's stream is hopefully going to be a little bit different than normal. Um, if we can get all the details worked out, I will be over in the main on the main galactic page not in this group I'll share it to this group obviously and you can still watch it from in here but it will be over on the main galactic page and hopefully there'll be a trend of every Wednesday we'll be doing that and we'll be painting different things not just uh, 40k and Age of Sigma not just Warhammer stuff we'll be painting all sorts of different miniatures um, to help get other people that might not know about painting into painting where is Steven Nichols when you need him? Yeah, really. All right, so I'm going to get some light blue here. In this case, Baharoth blue. It's an edge paint, but I'm not using it for its edging qualities. I'm using it for its highlighting qualities. And in this case, with a makeup brush. So just like before, I'm going to get some paint on the makeup brush. That looks good. And I'm just going to make sure the bristles are all over the makeup brush, or rather the paint is all over the bristles. The bristles are all coated. Make sure most of the paint is off the brush. Just rub it on whatever. In this case, I'm rubbing it, rubbing it on a paper towel and some of my skin. And then we're just going to do little circles. Little circles, little circles, little circles. Just like Bob Ross taught us. Nice little circles. And we're going to do the other side. I'm just going to make sure... It's coming off his base. Let's make sure to not hit this black that we just put on here, or else we're going to have very weird looking blends. So there you go. There you go. And then the very last thing, we're going to take the same Baharoth blue, but with a real brush this time, not a makeup brush, and just do the very edge of it with an edge highlight. Just like that. And then also going to touch, just like we touched the white on all the black gems, going to touch this on all these gems. Flip them over. Do the edge highlight on this side also. I know it's a single blade, but it does. you do need to get the edge highlight on both sides. And then just touch the gem. Touch the gem. Touch the gem. And we're all set. And I think that will be it. I'll go back and do his basing some other time. Maybe never. Who knows? I don't plan on doing anything with this miniature. But yeah, that's that. Uh, hopefully you learned a little bit about what you can do blending-wise with just your brush, not with an airbrush. There's two examples right here. Uh, this one is definitely better than this one, even though I did this one in front of everybody. Maybe I had performance anxiety, who knows. But just with a makeup brush from Walmart and some normal paint straight out of the pot, you can get smooth blends just like you'd achieve with wet blending or with an airbrush. So that about does it for this one. Like I said, on Wednesday, I'll hopefully be over in the main galactic page painting something related to D&D &D or board games. Um, or Keith will say, no, you can't do that. And I'll be right back here painting Warhammer. Either way, thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you next time.